Hello, this is Ryan Carlson with Health Jump, and today we're here with Molly Monahan, the Vice President of Operations and Innovation at Reporting MD. Molly, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. Thank you for having me. So my first question is always the easiest one. Tell us about Reporting MD and what you guys do. So Reporting MD, we do a number of things, but we are a qualified registry that supports the submission, the reporting and submission of quality data for various paper performance programs and an effort to improve value-based care in this country where we are able to take data from various disparate systems and able to aggregate measures appropriately and load them into our total outcomes management platform, which is our front-end user application where providers, organizations, organizations, quality managers, quality directors can utilize the platform to manage outcomes, close care, get manage their day sheet, manage patients that are going to be coming into the practice that day and the number of open care gaps that they have and having basically the ability to close those care gaps as, as they come in. So that's the highlight of the application. And then we have a service package that comes along with that, that portal which is essentially a live person that's going to be working with the organization throughout the year on a monthly basis or however frequently the client wants, that being the practice or, or multi-network practices or organizations. And <clears throat> the intent of those meetings is really to provide timely information, what deadlines they should be worrying about, what kinds of things throughout the, the year should they be focused on. At the beginning of the year, typically you're focused on submission of the prior year data. Middle of the year, you're starting to understand what is being talked about for the next year. You're looking at your performance on various quality measures for your organization and you're managing that towards the end of the year, the third um quarter, you're focused on understanding your open care gaps, the number of open care gaps, if there are opportunities to, to get patients in to close those care gaps and, and start improving quality care. And then the end of the year is really pulling all the data together. And then we go back into that submission of all the data and all the things that were worked out through the prior year. It's really a very strong application that um, comes with a very strong service package as well. Who is your customer? And by customer, sometimes we think, is it the person buying the product? Is it the person using the product? In this case, it's who is it that has a business problem that they're willing to pay to make it go away? So who is it that you primarily deal with as a customer? It's a great question. It's healthcare practices. I would say kind of the gamut. You have uh, one doc practices that that utilize our help and some of them are very sophisticated and they rely on they rely on their technology they're not fighting off the technology so much they're relying on that technology to have constant data to be making sure that they're on top of their quality care and then you have mid-sized practices where it's a single tax id number 50 to 100 different providers multi-specialty uh, and then you can have specialty specific practices, radiology practices, for example. And then you have large multi-tin networks. So where you deal with kind of a hierarchical, like a, a top level organization that manages various, various practices underneath it, all with the goal of improving quality care. What is it that the problem, like what? Uh, normally I ask a question like, what's the problem that you solve? But I don't think that's actually, you've addressed a number of the pain points. So let's think about in a world that doesn't have reporting MD, right? Like the movie trailer, in a world without reporting MD, what is, what's missing? What does life look like without a tool or software platform like yours? It's funny that you asked that question. And I think... Today, I was working on a blog, and I don't know if you there are any Ted Lasso fans out there, but working on a blog that basically asked, can real-time data be the Roy Kent effect for value-based care and outcomes management? And really, I got into that, the question that you've asked, because essentially, you think about going into a visit and sitting down with the provider, and the old days, you would sit down and have a conversation with your provider, and they'd provide you care. Yep. Today, you often walk into the visit and you sit down and maybe you, there's a nurse manager or uh, administrative staff that does a couple of things, blood pressure, those things. 
your provider comes in, they sit down, barely give you a look, and then they stare at their computer and they're trying to navigate all the different screens that they have to go through to figure out first and foremost, all the little open care gaps that they need to figure out that are open for that patient. So the entire time they're just wasting time clicking around, trying to figure out what they need to to do. They're not spending time talking to the patient. They're not hearing the patient. There's just too much time that's wasted. So the gap is the EHR is there for a reason. The EHR is holding all of that. It's basically the patient's historical profile, right? Their, yep. their whole yep. picture, their whole story. If we want to move healthcare forward, what we need is we need to have systems in place that allow any type of provider that wants to do their job in any type of way. And so if it means that they have a list of every day, they come in and they get a list of patients that have in their open care gaps on their screen. And then when they sit down with that patient, they just can whip through those open care gaps, get rid of, get those all figured out. And then they can work on the care needs for the patient at hand. Or they can look at them on their, through email or their administrative staff can hand them a piece of paper and they can walk into the visit and know all of those care gaps. It's right there in front of them. They don't have to spend time searching through to figure out what work needs to be done before the actual patient work starts. So that's real-time data is an even nicer, that, that brings that story into play in those visits and it allows doctors to know what things they need to do get those things off the chart, and then focus on the patient. I think you just described my experience in the early, in the early years of Salesforce.com. <laughs> and I think about software as falling into one of two camps. There's alignment tools where it's all about getting all of the data in a consistent manner. And it's not for the person that's entering in. It's for someone many steps removed so they can know, ooh, People are salesforce.com. Are my people making calls? What mm -hmm. does our funnel look like? Mm -hmm. But that's not helping with that customer. And then there's engagement tools. And many of them are from an ecosystem of add-ons, plugins, and it's engagement tools that make it easier for people to do their job. Yep. And that seems to be a balance that I'm hearing you're helping strike, which is adding in those engagement level tools, not just provider engagement, yeah. but patient engagement as well. So what do we talk about during our visit? Yeah. What's been the challenge that reporting MD has been able to uniquely overcome? What is the barrier to addressing this challenge that you're doing, you'd say really well, that people go, oh, we're going to use reporting MD because they're great at, what is it? Yeah, I think government and public private payers and the various value-based care programs and pay for performance programs have pushed us a long way improving quality care. They, for whatever reason, whether it's financial incentives or financial penalties have forced our hand to start doing some of these things as our standard operating procedure, because we know that at a certain point when you're doing this consistently and closing care gaps, whether they're BMI measurements or, or blood pressure control and understanding the blood pressure profile for a patient or more disease specific diabetes management, we know that managing all of those things on a consistent basis and knowing the profile for the patient, we know that improves care. Now, where, how do you take that further because to a certain extent we're stuck in this well we have to fulfill the requirements of the various programs that we've decided to be under if we're a medicare share savings program if we're reporting for mix if we're reporting for this i feel like sometimes you get some of the organizations get blinders that it's about just filling fulfilling those requirements and i feel like our current challenge is about pushing beyond that and really moving the needle forward in terms of changing and improving care quality. And like I said, the real-time data and having the ability to have 
understand the patients that are coming in, be able to take care of those kind of admin, the things that are important, their care gaps, they need to be done, controlling blood pressure, all those pieces, they need to be done. But there's also a patient level or a patient workup that needs to happen as well. And having that real-time data is key. That's, I think that will help us to move that dial forward. Part of the whole goal, whether accountable care organizations or anyone doing the quality measures, the, the incentive is to reduce the cost of healthcare. How is it that we're dealing with a cumbersome system that, you know, interoperability is both an action, an outcome, a expectation and an excuse That's true. why things are happening. Right. Yep. I keep thinking that what, like, how do we get enough data to not just reduce the cost of healthcare? Yeah. But to make it better. We know the, the high risk populations keep diabetics out of the hospital winner, right? Like hospitalizations, if we can eliminate that, then great. Sure. But where do we start? Where do, at what point does me as a patient who doesn't have any major conditions still get to benefit from this forward thinking set of tools where my providers are getting more informed or more insightful decisions, or they can make more insightful decisions based off of an aggregate of information. I'm hearing something you, you said early on about how your software is in real time. Is it comparing people like me with uh, similar conditions or models? And how, are, how is your software helping inform better decisions for providers in general? That's a big question. I think it's twofold. I think improving the cost of healthcare in this country needs to be driven by quality of healthcare in this country. Yep. And it brings in technology, it brings in all of the data, but I think a lot of it to a certain extent is elongating and that's tough to hear. If you were to go and send CMS or the Medicare an email right now and ask them, how do I improve my cost scores under MIPS. They will not answer you. <laughs> Believe me, I know because I've asked it a thousand times. It is not, it's not an overnight change. The only time that I really saw a change, that, the, the quickest change that I ever saw to cost was when an organization started bringing in nurse practitioners and primary care, one primary care or one NP into an ED. And that primary care person had the ability to go in and actually, from a macro standpoint, say when a patient was ready to be moved, be hospitalized or released. And it, it started to expedite some of the things and that started to reduce costs. And it really made a, it made a significant change. So much that I think that they had, they just had a big change in their cost scores under the MIPS program from, from one year to the next. It was pretty shocking. So that's the fastest I've seen it go. But I think there's a lot of things when I talk about the long game, I'm talking about understanding what a patient, if I walk in and I sit down and I'm having my annual visit physical and the provider doesn't talk to me about my, any of my family histories, so family history of breast cancer, doesn't talk to me about that, about that. That doesn't get included in my profile for the year. And so every year a patient's risk score gets a clean slate. They start over from scratch. So every visit, every event, it starts adding back up again. And if those histories don't get discussed in my appointment, the payers that are paying for my care don't understand how complex of a patient rate. And the accuracy of their payments is not going to be correct. It's significant. And that's just one piece of the puzzle. There are understanding how the percentage of annual wellness visits your Medicare patients are seeing every year, understanding if your Medicare patients even know what they're eligible to receive in terms of care. Those annual wellness visits do for painting the picture for the patient. They have cogniz cognitive assessments. They have falls, risk. They have a number of different things. And that all contributes to that patient's story and that patient's profile and really and, and paints the picture for payers as well. Also, all of these pieces, these annual wellness visits or annual physicals, Medicare Advantage patients, it, these, they're so critical to really write that story so that everybody knows the complexity, but also to prevent those traumatic 
health events that can erupt because your blood pressure is not being met. It's scary how many times those things happen and they're unnecessary costs and they're traumatic to the patient and it needs to be managed on a daily basis. So let me hear this. I, I need to hear it come from you. But is it true that it's nothing but a series of snapshots in time? If they don't bring something up at one visit, okay, annual, and it just gets lost, it, it's not brought up. And so you've got all these disparate, fragmented, siloed snapshots of different pictures of me and my health based on what my visit was. Yep. Is reporting MD... Is it taking all of these fragments and reassembling them into a more complete picture? Or tell me more about yeah. how you're helping get that th more of a 360 view on yeah. a patient. Is that the goal? So, you know, some of the, some of our dashboards have, will show prior diagnoses for patients. And it's a lot of the kind of family history stuff is going to come in as a diagnosis. And it's going to show this diagnosis was included on a claim in 2020. This one was included on a claim in 2019. There's nowhere it's been included on a claim in 2021. We're, we are working on providing even more enriching kind of reporting to call out how patients' risk scores and risk management is changing from year to year. I think it's also really important for organizations to understand the risk profile of a patient population under each of their providers. Who's managing all these super complex patients? And, and is there a reason why they're not able to achieve the type of quality scores that, they, that everybody else is? Because they don't have time because their patient population is the most complex in the organization. I think there's a lot of ways to look at, but I think it does take having the ability to actually look at it from a macro level, from a micro level, and start working that end. Like I said, this is a long game. This is not going to happen overnight. And organizations that are pushing the envelope are the ones that are paying attention to all the details, which feels like you're getting cut by a thousand knives, but it's, um, it does work over time if you're really managing each patient and making sure they're, they're getting consistent care. What is the one thing you wish more people knew about reporting MD that doesn't always seem obvious? I think there's a lot of things. Um, I would say that the application is critical for success, but the application is only promotes that kind of success when you have guidance and you have support along the way to to really be looking at this in an analytical way to call out things to you, to make sure that you're aware of big things that are standing out or trends that you see in provider performance, or why is this one provider who's a family medicine provider or primary care provider, why do, are zero of their diabetic patients being managed? Why do they all have A1Cs that are totally out of control? What's wrong with what's wrong here? I think that they're is very much a technology piece that's critical, but I think it only works when you have somebody who's looking at it with that kind of analytical view and giving you that level of support. So our service line is really key. And I call them, for example, the full Emily or the full Michelle or the full, and that means that they're getting the full kind of service line that goes along with that. I think that's consistent advice. Uh, or even a consistent observation across any software platform, even salesforce.com, right? If people aren't using it, it's not going to provide the outcomes that are desirable. Yep. And so it sounds like an adoption challenge in most cases and a top-down deal, right? If we're not committed to this, buying a tool won't solve the problem if you don't have the muscles that are strong enough to right. use the tool. Yep. Last question, is the world of value-based care and success, is it art or science, or if it's both, you know, where do you think it falls? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I wish it 
the answer was simply science. But I think at this point, it does, it requires a level of art. We all have to be really creative to figure out how this is. we're going to move the dial forward. And whether it's trending media in blogs to get people to pay attention to what we're trying to say or whatever it is, I think it, it really does take a level of creativity, a level of enthusiasm about what we're doing. And I think with healthcare, the nicest thing about it is that we can all look at ourselves in the in the mirror and know that we're out for the patient at the end of the day. I think it probably crosses. I'm hearing once we learn how to nail it, we can scale it. And Reporting MD is the way to scale those wins. Molly Monahan, VP of Operations and Innovation at Reporting MD, thank you so much for your time and sharing the story of how Reporting MD is turning data into value out in the healthcare marketplace. So thank you.